Welcome to the Watchmen on the Pod, sounding the alarm and investigating Jesus' second coming and the end time events. We are to be watching, ready, and warning. Good evening, this is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. With me is Nikki. Hello, good evening. Today we are going to continue with our book reading, and we're in chapter 3. The title of the book is Kabbalah Secrets, Christians Need to Know by Deanne Looper or Lopper, I should say, and it is an in-depth study of Kabbalah. Chapter 3 is titled Prophecy, Creation, and the Gods of Kabbalah. Uh, All right, the beginning of this has got a verse, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, A good tree cannot bear forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth evil good fruit. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Matthew 7, 18, and also 12, 33. Amen. All right. Isaac Lira, father of modern Kabbalah. Shapira is not the only rabbi or pastor disseminating Kabbalistic doctrines into the church today. There are many. Even the use of the title rabbi should raise an alarm, as Jesus told his followers not to be called rabbi. Matthew 23, 8. All things must be tested in the light of the Bible. Sadly, many Christians today are not looking past the veneer of impressive words that sound like truth. Instead, they are placing themselves under the bewitchment of Kabbalah, veiled in so-called Judaism. Bless you. Based on a prophecy in the Zohar, there is a very definite and planned effort to bring the entire world into the study of Kabbalah as the necessary precursor that will usher in a false messiah. This is, the, this is why the true followers of Jesus Christ must be able to recognize basic terms and teachings as identified by the rabbis of Kabbalah. Which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Yes. Because deception's really sly. Oh, yes it is. It, it only a manner of a, just a slight little change of a word here, slight little change of a word here, it can change the entire context of something. Well, and you know, God also said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You've got to have the knowledge of what's going on. Gots to. Absolutely. Of all the rabbis referenced in Shapira's book, none has been more influential in the history and development of Kabbalah than Isaac Lira, also known as the Ari, or the Lion. Born in Jerusalem in 1534, he was and is still known by his disciples as the Master Kabbalist. His method of Kabbalah, Luranic Kabbalah, continues to be the predominant form of Kabbalah followed by the rabbis today, as confirmed by Shapira. Quote, Rabbi Yitzhak Lurira who was the founding rabbi of the party's method. Many considered him the founder of the Torah of Kabbalah. He is considered the father of contemporary Kabbalah." Unquote. This brief description of Isaac Lira from the return of the kosher pig as the founder of the mystical party's method and the father of contemporary Kabbalah lends itself to further explanation but Shapira gives us none. Therefore, I present the following excerpt on Isaac Lira from the Kabbalah Online, which publishes Kosher Kabbalah from the Holy City of Saved Israel, where Lira spent the last years of his life and died. Yes. I have a question. Uh-huh. Is that an actual city that saved, or is that Saf? Fed or something like that. Oh, it could be Safed. I never thought about it. I was just reading it the way it sounds. Look, <laughs> saved. You know, it could be Safed. <laughs> I was just wondering. I wonder. I do not know. That is so funny, Nikki. 
you know, hey, it's tomato or it's tomato. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I was just wondering because it, it, it seems probably, like... Well, I'll have to keep that in mind next time we come around to it. Oh, Not you'll funny. come around to it a few more times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, quote, One of the greatest Kabbalists of all time, he founded a new school in Kabbalah, the so-called Lorenic Kabbalah, which is the basis of almost all mystical works that followed him undisputedly the greatest practitioner and expounder of Kabbalah since Rabbi Shimon Bar Yaki, author of the Zohar. On numerous occasions Elijah the prophet revealed himself and taught the Ari, the mysteries of the Torah. Every night his soul ascended into the heavenly realms. Mm. Troops of angels would greet him to safeguard his way bringing him to the heavenly academies. These angels would ask him which academy he chose to visit. Sometimes it would be that of Rabbi Shimon bar Yaki, and other times he would visit the heavenly academies of Rabbi Akiva or Rabbi Eliezer the Great. On occasion he would also visit the heavenly academies of the ancient prophets. In five in fifty three thirty, which is fifteen seventy, after he had attained an extremely exalted rung of holiness in Egypt, Elijah told him the time had come to move to Safed or Safed City <laughs> in the Galilee in the north of Israel. There he would meet Rabbi Chaim Vidal the man to whom he was destined to transmit the keys to the ancient knowledge. What in the world? Isn't that crazy? Well, one, <clears throat> yeah, there's many things that are crazy. An exalted time of holiness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that it's like... And they're saying that he went into the heavenlies. He, he's flesh and blood. Well, yeah, that that definitely goes against the Bible. And then the angels just nonchalantly, "Where well, you want to visit today?" Yeah, like he's got a VIP. Yeah, like he's got a choice. He's got a VIP in heaven. Yeah. You know, he can go down to this block or this block. But like you were just saying, and you know, I didn't think of that before until you just said that. How is it they're going into the heavenlies if they're flesh and blood? Yeah. Doesn't it say in the Bible that flesh and blood will not it's enter fine. in? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just so confused by these Well, people. even when Jesus rose, he told him, you know, touch me. He says he's flesh and bone. There was no blood going through him. Right. He, he had already taken and cleansed heaven. You understand what I'm saying? It's all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Okay, here we go. Um, before we get all messed up. Oh, I know it. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, the Ari overflowed with Torah. He was thoroughly expert in scripture, Mishnah, and Talmud, and Maish and Merkava, the esoteric disciplines. He was expert in the language of trees, the language of birds, and the speech of angels. He could read faces in the manner outlined in the Zohar, volume 2, page 74b. He could discern all that any individual had done, and could see what they would do in the future. Mm. He could read people's thoughts often before the thoughts even entered their mind. I'm going to stop there. Now I want you to think about this. What do psychics do? Mm -hmm. And you know, here you have Satan cannot read your mind, but he most certainly can put a thought in your mind. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So here it is, this rabbi, supposedly, he's working with familiar spirits. He's not working with heavenly angels. Oh, what is it? The Witch of Endor? The Witch of Endor. That's crazy. Yeah, so he's working with familiar spirits. That's exactly what he's doing. Because, now this is the way I, I look at all that. As soon as you are born, you are assigned a fallen angel, so to speak, a familiar spirit. And that familiar spirit's with you every single day, every minute of the day of your life. It, and they can tell what you're thinking by your facial expressions and by your actions. And also, they will implant thoughts, you know, like, um, go hit that person or whatever, you know, what I'm saying. And they will see your reaction to it. They cannot predict what you're going to do, but they know 
what you're going to do by your expressions, by your bodily reaction to the thought. You understand what I'm saying? Can I ask you a serious question? Uh huh. Can we? F- is there stuff in the the word that tells us about things being assigned to us and stuff? Like probably in the Old Testament or something? You no, know, I I really don't know. I really don't know. I can't I can't say that I've read it personally, but I know that it is so because Satan is not everywhere at all times. He's right. not omnipresent. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So therefore we each one have a fallen angel, demonic whatever, spirit, whatever you want to call them, that follows us. Because okay. someone's gotta make us fall. You understand that? Someone's gotta tempt us. So many people say, Well Satan tempted me. Oh oh really you're that important? Because Satan is really not interested in me per se. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, he wants me in hell, but his attention is not focused on me. His attention is focused on his own plan. And right now it's probably with the Antichrist somewhere. Or it might be with Kim Young or whatever his name is, North Korea, if he's gonna attack America. You understand what I'm saying? With the big players. With the big players. One at a time though. He's not everywhere. It, and see, that's why I believe myself is 5G and all of this technology that has come out. To me, it's not new. It was just came out at the time it was supposed to come out. And it came out slowly so we would become addicted to it. Gotcha. And then, you know, it would, you know, we don't even question it. There's so many people who don't even question it. Well, this 5G is going to get Satan to the point where he is going to be omnipresent through technology. Gotcha. I understand? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. He knew future events and was aware of everything happening here on earth and what was decreed in heaven. He knew the mysteries of Gilgal, reincarnation, who had been born previously and who was here for the first time. He could look at a person and tell him how he was connected to higher spiritual levels and his original root in Adam. The Ari could read wondrous things about people in the light of a candle or in the flame of a fire see he's missing a crystal ball that's all he needs boom there you got it you understand what I'm saying it's crazy <clears throat> and people believe this that's what's all messed up well what's even more messed up okay so now you're connected to higher spiritual levels mm-hmm. I just I don't remember Paul or Peter talking about these higher spiritual letters, uh, levels, I mean. You know, I don't see John in any of his books. And, you know what I mean? Right, they're they're right. just now like, oh, woohoo, I leveled up. I got to level two today. Yeah, no. You know, no. I don't see any of that stuff. And even John, with him being such a spiritual book in general, I don't see where he's got, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy how they're wording. Things. I mean, even Ezekiel, think about it. I mean, he's seen God and God's throne, you know, a wheel within a wheel and all that other good stuff. But he didn't go to, you know, he's not like Pac-Man or whatever. I don't play games, so I don't know. But there's no higher level going on there. There's not. Right. It's just crazy. All right. With his eyes, he gazed and was able to see the souls of the righteous, both those who had died recently and those who had lived in ancient days times. That's the witch of Indoor right there. Yeah, for real. Together with and from these departed souls, he studied the true mysteries. From a person sent, he was able to know all that they had done. And that's just crazy. Now, come on now. That, that Like I, a dog? I'm you know, I mean, I could imagine. I'm out there, you know, shoveling poop from the cow pasture walk in and be like oh you've been with the cows oh uh, yeah I sure have been you know I'm sorry <laughs> I'm not oh forgive us we should not laugh because you know we are dealing with spirits here but still you know it's silly alright see Zohar volume 3 page 188a it was as if the answers to all these mysteries lay dormant within him waiting to be activated whenever he desired he did not have to seclude himself to seek them out. All this we saw with our own eyes. These are not things that we heard from others. They were wondrous things that had not been seen on earth since the time of Rabbi Shimon bar Yaki. None of this was attained through magic, heaven forbid. There is a strong prohibition against these arts. Instead, it came automatically 
as a result of his saintliness and asceticism after many years of study in both the ancient and the newer Kabbalistic text. Mm -mm. He then increased his piety, asceticism, purity, and holiness until he reached a level where Elijah would constantly reveal himself to him, speaking to him mouth to mouth, teaching him these secrets, unquote. Sounds to me like he was over the edge of insanity now, to this point. Something, because something, I mean, to even <clears throat> say, you know, now Elijah is going to constantly reveal himself. Right. Oh, excuse me. And speaking to a mouth-to-mouth and stuff, you know, I just, I don't know. Well, it's like this. It's like this. Apostle Paul said, if any man come, remember preaching another gospel. Right. Or a spirit comes preaching another gospel. Or right. even an angel. Right. Let him be accursed. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not just for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's for the entire word of God. And on top of that, here you have, what is his name? What's that guy's name? Muhammad, I believe is his name. He was in the cave. He did not summon the jinn to him. The jinn, which he called Gabriel, came to him. You understand what I'm saying? He wasn't sitting there meditating on it. All of a sudden, boop, there he is. Well, and if you think about the fact that, you know, the in Deuteronomy and Revelation, it says very strongly, yeah, don't, don't add. add to, don't take away. But these guys are twisting and stretching and pulling. and well, Yeah. They really just, are. Just okay. amazed. From this account of Lyra's life, we can get a pretty clear idea of how a future Moshiach, Messiah of Kabbalah, might appear, complete with Elijah, the false prophet, as his forerunner. In this case, a familiar spirit. In fact, another authoritative source notes that certain allusions made to his disciples suggest that he... Lura believed himself to be the Messiah, the son of Joseph, destined to die in the fulfillment of his mission. Like Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, Lyra's ability to perform signs and wonders greatly impressed his contemporaries and his teachings continue to influence the followers of Kabbalah today. And the sad thing is, Nikki, it's the same thing in the charismatic realm these days. If, you know, there's signs and wonders, people are flocking to them. Oh, yeah. And they have no discernment whatsoever, so they'll roll around on the floor laughing like a hyena and shaking and convulsing and hissing like a snake, barking like a dog. There's even churches that, Nikki, they will have leashes on their husbands or on their wives walking around like a dog and calling that the move of the Spirit. Wow, that's... Yeah, that's that, insane. That's, that's very And the crazy. thing is, if you speak against it, people say, whoa, you, know, you don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That is not the Holy Ghost. Right. That is not of God. Right, right. And seeing if it's just a matter of testing the spirits. You know, we were told to test the spirits, especially, you know, I'm sure it wasn't just, eh, I'm going to test with someone because I feel like it. No, yeah. test all exactly. things. Exactly. So, I mean, if it doesn't line up. It's exactly. How are we supposed not, to test the spirits? So. I mean, we don't have a spirit meter going on. Mm -hmm. We have the Word of God. Exactly. And if it's not in the Word of God, you do not accept it. Walk away. Not walk. Run away. Get out of it. Right. Don't look back. Don't don't be like Lot's wife. No, do you, not. You want to be See, like that's the God thing that I had wrote the other day, God. and I mean it with all of my heart. Search the Word of God. If it is not in there, do not accept it. The only thing we have right now on this earth before us is the written Word of God. Don't Absolutely. shy away from it. Okay. Absolutely. The Kabbalah, Sepharet, Tree of Knowledge, and its Roots. As seen in the return of the kosher pig, Shapira has provided extensive re references to the heavenly journeys at, of the rabbis by way of mystical meditation and angelic encounters that result in strong delusion. On page 206, he has included an illustration of the Sepharic tree. 
In Kabbalah, the Savarit tree is referred to interchangeably as the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It is the bridge connecting heaven and earth and represents man's ascent by decrees of knowledge back to the paradise that was lost and ultimately to his own divinity before the fall. Shapiro refers to the Seraphite tree of knowledge and its relation to Yeshua multiple times in his book. Describing the role of Messiah as the last redeemer, he states, He will serve as a connector between the heavens and the earth by the spark of life. Page 205. Quoting again from mystical Jewish sources, Shapira then attempts to show that the female sphere of Bana on the Sarah tree is a manifestation of Yeshua, the Son of God. In his explanation of the ten Sirfat as the ten manifestations of God, Shapira states the following, quote, the left side of the ten manifestations represents the feminine attributes, while the right side represents the masculine attributes. The feminine manifestation of God represents the part of God that we can see and remain alive. Hmm. Hashem reduced himself to the middle part or middle pillar during creation. Amazingly, the middle pillar is referred to as the Messiah himself, as the Benah, or the son of Yah. The responsibility of the middle pillar, the mediator, is to join heaven and earth together, called in Judaism, connection of the worlds. The last redeemer is known as the Benah, the son of God, Elyon, the one from above, the firstborn, and as a bull. I have a question. Yes. Serious question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I understand that you have Yeshua. Yeah. You have Elohim. Mm -hmm. You have these different names and stuff. And you have Yah. Mm -hmm. Is Yah a Kabbalah thing? I believe it is. I don't. I've never read Yah in the Bible. I mean, I've read Yahweh. I'm just curious because I know that the there's the Hebrew roots, mm -hmm. sacred and, name movement, and the sacred name movement, and so I was wondering how that fit into it, and both of those movements fit in myself. I believe personally into this Kabbalism. I really do. Is it a branch of it? Would because you, say? you know what, true Jews don't want nothing to do with you being a Jew. You understand what I'm saying? But these Kabbalists, they trick you just enough to get you hooked and get you back under the law. It's like Galatians, the book of Galatians. Hmm. It's crazy. Well, I was just wondering because I just, you know, that's something, something you hear from time to time. Yeah, and I just, yeah people say it all the time. And or I was they'll just say, wondering. Yahushua or Yahshua or, you know, Yeshua, Yahweh, um, then they, they put vowels in the tetragrammaton, you know, instead of it's, you know, oh, yo -hey -vah -hey exactly. Or uh, it's just, it's, I don't know. I was just wondering if that's all like Kabbalah wrapped up into a nice pretty box or if it's like a branch of it or if just, just kind of where it came from. Yeah. I was just wondering if it just, you know, was all part of it. Because well, I've it never seems... read Yah in the word of God. Well, it seems like... And what would be short for? The spider. I mean, if Yahweh means Jehovah, uh -huh. which means God, then uh -huh. what on earth could Yah mean? I don't know. But it, it reminds Aww. me of a giant spider web. And you know yeah. what they say about the spider webs? Yeah. What is it? A, oh, a, what a tangled web we weave. When at once we practice to deceive. And that's what it reminds me of, is like, here's at the the heart of it, mm -hmm. where you got the center, and then as you go farther away, farther away, you have um, the spaces in between the points. Right, right. And stuff, and so that's why I was just wondering. Well, you know, what's really funny, Nikki, is, I mean, as we're reading this and stuff, there's things that's jumping out to me, the things that you and I and other people have encountered, just like, you know, where it speaks about a gatekeeper. I mean... 
we knew people that reading would call the faces. somebody a uh, gatekeeper. Reading faces. That yeah. they could tell what you were, what kind of spirit you were from, by your facial expressions. I know that. And, well, all the way down to this little part. I'm just... Yeah. I'm, I'm, there's... I understand that the Lord has a great plan and he and the Holy Spirit is a wonderful teacher mm -hmm. God opens up things just when you need it you know and and it's amazing seeing the different things that you had to you know, stumble upon or had been through and then now this is just confirming and confirming and confirming and honestly this is like seeing a bunch of dots in front of you and this is just taking that marker connecting and connecting them, them because yep. I tell you it's just like Wow. Well, yeah, because some of those things really disturbed me bad. I mean, I remember I, I was typing in gatekeeper, see if it was even in the Bible, because I was freaking out over that. It was like, what on earth? Where did where did this hat even come from? Well, and then you have this thing, you know, when it was talking about the, the feminine ma manifestations and stuff, and then, you know, we just read the other night about the whole Shekinah. Yeah. And that being, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, wow. And then the thing that gets me too is there's a part that says that um, you can see and remain alive. Nobody has seen the Father. Nobody. At all. It's always Jesus. And that's what the I don't... The pre-incarnate and the incarnate. And it's just like, are you kidding me? There's... They're taking a little bit of this and then a little bit over here yep. and a little bit over here and they're like making a they're smoothie They're making like a it. Hebrew stew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Just crazy. <sighs> All right, uh, All right go here ahead. we go. I'm sorry. Contrast these statements of Shapira with those of the 33rd degree Freemason and occultist Manly P. Hall. Isn't that, a, isn't that Are amazing? you serious? Manly P. Hall. Did I not study on him? Did he? Did, uh, he amazing. Mm. All right. I'm the just... Sephiroth tree consists of 10 globes of luminous splendor arranged in three vertical columns and connected by 22 channels or paths. Anal How do you say that word? Oh, analogous. I and It's like analog OS. To the first 32 degrees of Freemasonry, which elevate the candidate to the dignity of a prince of the royal secret. Ama the Great Mother, is the name by which Bana, or the Third Sephira, is generally known. According to the mysteries of the Seraph, the order of the creation, from an Sof, the Nothing, and all an -an Sof, according to Kethra, or Kethi, no, Kether. Kether, the crown of the Seraph gives birth out of himself to the nine lesser spheres from this eternal and ancient androgen mm -hmm. Kether come forth Kashma the great father and Bina the great mother wow the first male and female the prototypes of sex and oh. that messed up okay so where's Adam and Eve at well, and then you're going to say the Great Father. What's this other stuff? Is it like trying to... I keep seeing where they're having the male and the female. God is... There's no female angels in heaven. No, I, no they're not written in the Word of God. Well, not even the angels. Look, this is from the eternal and ancient... Oh, my gosh, that's a big word. But anyway, it's the Great Father and the bin Not and the Great Mother. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're trying to fit together... Uh, right, right. The Mother, God, the Father, Father, and the Shekinah Glory. Right, and then Jesus, and just, yeah, uh -uh. you know... No, 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 no. Kind of like that on Holy Jesus Trinity. does not have a beginning. And I don't understand why people cannot fathom that. Jesus always was. He right. is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the first. He is the last. He always was. Yes. Just like the Father always was. They were yes. never created. Just the, like Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit never too. created. I don't... I... It's, it's just, that's faith. Okay. As a Master Mason and Mystic... Manly Hall understood the secret teachings of Kabbalah, revealing in riddles those mysteries related to cosmology. 
the origin of the universe and the god small g who rules from the top of the sephirot tree and soth in kabbalah the concepts of creation the fall of man redemption and especially the coming messiah are vastly different from the biblical view and Shapira introduces his readers to many of these cryptic ideas. Based on his wide scope of rabbinical knowledge, Shapira must also know the diametrical opposites of Christianity and Kabbalah. Therefore, whatever connections he is trying to make between Jesus Christ and the Messiah of Kabbalah are simply not there. According to the Zohar, the main book of Kabbalah, the God, small g, who created the universe is not the God Elohim of Genesis 1.26, but in Soph, an infinite, formless, unknowable source. In Soph, also spelled A-I-N, Soph, may be defined as the supreme deity, the eternal state of being the absolute not being without substance essence or intelligence <coughs> the most ancient of all ancients unquote. in the Genesis account of creation Elohim is the creator but in Kabbalistic theology in Soth is the creator of Elohim okay well if that's not blasphemous I don't know what is yeah exactly now, the Zohar's account of in Soph creating Elohim. Yes. So, there's some diagrams. Mm-hmm. So, if I can figure out how to... Um, Copy, paste, seriously. and put it up. Yeah. Okay. So, they can have these diagrams. So, they can see what seen. we see as far as these diagrams. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. To... That's no problem. Now, the pillars stand firm. The blinding flash, the creation of Elohim. This is the Zohar's name for the first impulse of emanation proceeding from Ensof, the infinite, through Ketar, or Keter. One spark, a pure aura, emerged from Keter, the aura of Ensof, the creation of Elohim. Rabbi no, Rabbah, so far, 3, 128b. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. What we'll on. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Romans chapter 1, verse 21, 22, and 25. Ensof is not the God of the Bible, but the God, small g, of the Jewish mystics and sages, the same mystic sages that Shapira praises in the return of the kosher pig. Gershom, oh, Schlockham, that's what I'm going to call him, was the first professor of Jewish mysticism at Hebrew University of Jerusalem and wrote volumes on the subject of Kabbalah. In his book, Kabbalah, Shoslam, Shoslam relates the Insof and the Seraphat are not differentiated. How about Skolem? Skolem? <laughs> hey, that sounds good. Skolem. Well, no, that's what it looks like. See, school, but there's hole in the middle, and then M, so Very good. Skolem. Let's go and shook them, shlock them. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are going to apologize at this moment. Yes, we forgive us. We do not read names very well, and if we butcher the names... We are just two country girls from a little country village. Oh, yeah, because we live in a village. It's not even a town. Yeah. That's Trying sad. to feel our way through life, but thank God for the Holy Spirit. Okay, here we go. Okay. There is unity between the Creator and His creation, a oneness between the Emanator and the Sephirot that cannot be known to the uninitiated. In Kabbalah, God is immanent within creation. 
Schloem? Is that what you called it? Scholem. Scholem. Scholem notes, the Sephirot do not constitute intermediary beings, but are God himself. As a professor of mysticism, Scholem admitted that the system of Kabbalah cannot be explained in a simple and straightforward fashion. In Kabbalah, the Sephirot and its doctrine of divine unity represent a new plane of mystical experience and contemplation that can be fathomed only in the practice of mystical meditation. More importantly, Gershom Scholem observed that despite the wide range of traditions used in approaching mystical Judaism, the symbols and ideas of Luranic Kabbalah have dominated Kabbalistic thinking from the 17th century until recent times. Many Christians today assume that Jesus Christ and the awaited Moshiach of Judaism are one and the same. Therefore, it is important to understand the Kabbalistic doctrines on the fall of man and redemption as these remain the central Masonic themes in rabbinic Jewish thought today. These esoteric ideas are kept hidden for hundreds of years, but are now being released on a global scale according to a prophecy in the Zohar. Quote, in the 600th year of the 6th millennium, 5600 equals 1840 CE, this common era, the gates of wisdom above Kabbalah, together with the wellsprings of wisdom below, science, will be opened up and the world will prepare to usher in the seventh millennium. That's in the Zohar. What was forbidden to investigate and to expound upon the day before now becomes permissible the day after. This is because the gates of human understanding below have been opened up as a result of the steadily increasing divine revelations above. Until the time prior to the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, it was forbidden for Jews to learn the secret side of Torah unless they understood the whole of the Talmud. Really? Yeah. Many secrets of Torah are embodied in a volume known as the Zohar. That seems very, very backwards. Sneaky, doesn't it? Yeah. Which, because, you know, you already get them brainwashed when they, when they read that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Which contains these traditions. The teachings of this book were withheld for a thousand years with a prophecy that at a time when required it would be revealed. These secrets have been whispered and then articulated more and more loudly by the Rebis of Lepovich Chabad with this information a Jew can soar into the heavens. I'm going to stop there for a minute and I'm going to this is how I'm seeing what they're saying. It's like the boiling frog theory. But to put it in how I, I remember Nikki where I said that years ago <clears throat> Satan and the elitist they did a trial run to see how people would accept the UFO and the aliens, right? Uh -huh. And that trial run, which I believe was the radio um, broadcast with Orson Welles, The War of the Worlds. Well, that was an absolute disaster. People were absolutely terrified. Some people were killing themselves. It was just horrible. So they knew at that time it was too soon. Right. So what they did was slowly you have the Roswell. And then, you know, you have over the White House in the 80s, just little by little, getting people used to it. Well, in the movies the and movies indoctrination, the different stuff yes, about exactly. it. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. And that's how I see what they're doing with this, is to slowly lead them into it. So just indoctrinate them enough to where the next level, they're going to accept it more easily. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. To where it gets to that point where when the alien ship is going to be above all the cities, people are going to be excited. Because do you know right now here in the U.S., 
the Western world, people believe more in aliens than they do Almighty God. Yeah, and yeah, I find that sad. to be very, very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Every true Christian knows and believes that Elohim, the creator in Genesis, is God, and that Jesus Christ is God, the Word made flesh, John 1.14. But we have seen one of the secret teachings of Kabbalah is that in Soph, through Keter, created the biblical God, Elohim. Again, in Soph is the Kabbalistic conception of the God, small g, who sits above the seraphim tree. The following quote explains, The hidden, infinite aspect of God is called the infinite, and soft, without end. This name was understood as the proper one for the hidden aspect of God. The seraphot, not in soft, is the God of the Bible. Therefore, a Kabbalist can justifiably claim that in soft is nowhere mentioned in the Bible. The Bible refers only to the seraphot, the knowable God, not the hidden God. There is no hidden God. No. Bearing in mind, no, the heavens even proclaiming. Bearing in mind that Shapira says Yeshua is the created Binah in the seraphot tree of Kabbalah, we will look at the core doctrines of mystical Judaism found within Lura Anic Kabbalah. According to Isaac Lira, Ensoft emanated from himself ten spheres or vessels of light called Sephira, singular for Sephirot. The first was Keter, the crown, the androgynous god, small g, who is both male and female, also known as Adam Kadmon, which basically is Baphomet, if you ask me. I was going to say, who is better known as, a.k.a. Baphomet? Baphomet. Because Kitar is both male and female, the right side of the tree represents the masculine potencies of God, small g, while the left side represents the feminine aspects of God, small g. Now, if you look at the Baphomet set how statue, funny. I'm that's exactly it how it is. The male is on the right, the female is on the left. The remaining nine serifa or spheres, imminent from Kitar, through a process of mystical sexual union known as Heros Gamos, the holy union of male and female powers. This, this thesis of male and female is esoterically communicated in the union of the two triangles forming the six-pointed star, an occult symbol whose meaning is known and understood by those initiated into the secrets of Kabbalah. Since Ketar is androgynous, the first two Sifera emit from him. These are Homa no How would you pronounce it? Hokum Hokuma? Hokuma? And Bina? I'm not sure. Where Located are you at? right here. Hokuma? Oh right here. Right there, yeah. Hakma? Hakma? There you go. Hakma Hakka. Yeah, probably. That sounds like them in over in Israel. Chachma. No. <laughs> Benar. Benar. Located us. just below Kitar. At this point, it should be clear that Jesus Christ is not Bina. The result of an androgynous sexual act and creation of in Sof. Absolutely not. In this evolving process, Kitar, Hokuma, and Bina form a trinity from which emanates or gives birth to Hesed, male, and from Hesed emanates Givara, female. The Givara. next union, Heros Gomos, then produces Tephirat. Oh, I accidentally went too fast. Tephirat, this mystical sexual union of the Sephira continues all the way down to Melkot, also spelled Melkoth, the lowest sphere of the Sephirot tree. Melkot means kingdom, and Shekinah, there we go, Nikki, Shekinah. Uh, and whereas all of the other Sephira are located in the spirit world, Melkot represents the physical, material world in which we live and the Shekinah glory or dwelling of God, small g. So, it did get mentioned. I, I knew it. it was going to be Oh, mentioned. I love the next part. Keep reading. All right. The word Shekinah is not 
found in the Bible. I think you should have to read that sentence one more time. The word Shekinah <laughs> is not, not found in the Bible. The Kabbalah Shekinah is the final Sephira to emanate from the Sepharic tree. She is the female counterpart of En Sof and the divine presence of God in the earth, Little G. small g. She is the daughter conceived in the sacred marriage of Heroes Gamos. She is the gateway Whoa. of man's ascension to the knowledge. ascension to knowledge, the bride and queen of Tiferet. Well, I had to stop for a minute. That kind of blew me away there for a minute. That is really mind-blowing. All right. She is the mother who is one with the children of Israel. But something went wrong in this cosmic drama. There was a crisis, a shattering of God's dream, in which man is now left to work and pick up the pieces. Okay, we might as well take a small, quick break because I that, am absolutely blown that away was right mind now. blowing. So, yeah, let's just have a moment. Okay, we are back. <laughs> All right, the breaking of the vessels, exile, and Tikkun, the fall and redemption of gods and kings. And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke. 10, 18. In Kabbalah, the entire process of creation through emanation is described as a divine lightning flash from in soft, which zigzags through each of the nine sephira all the way down to Malkut, the kingdom of God, small g, on earth. I have a feeling we're going to hear something about the Kundalini here before too long because what does that sound like or the chakra? Yeah, for real. Because it's all right up that whole thing and stuff. I'm, wow, well, continue. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Just These nine away. sephra are also called worlds. In his book, Kabbalah, Gershom, what would you say? Skolom. Shlolom. Skolom. Skolom states that se the sephirot are also depicted as powers and crowns, since they are the celestial crowns of the holy king. Question. Whoa. Question. Uh-uh. I want to know if you're on the same thing I was going to say. I'm on the exact same thing. That right there looks exactly like, oh my goodness, the seven chakras of yoga, Kundalini, the serpent going up that. Do you see that? I do. Definitely got to put that in. Okay. Hold on just a second. Through the lightning flash of Insof, these crowns rise out of the sea of the abyss, revealing the unity of creation in the number six and symbolized in the reflection and union of two triangles. The six-pointed star from which comes the Egyptian maximum, as above, so below. You know, you know, <laughs> there's so much. Yeah, look at that. Look the, at that. Uh, that's what I say, Nikki. Look you, at it. That's a serpent going up that. That is the Kundalini. Okay, folks, for those of you <laughs> who are not able to see the pictures, because obviously we're reading it, Wow. You'll um, be able to see it. They'll be in the description box. You will be amazed. Okay, so before we post this, uh -huh. we'll go back through, and because I can't copy and paste from what we're doing, uh -huh. we'll either have to try to find them on Google Image or something, okay. and then we'll have to go from there. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. oh my gosh. Yeah, I see, because you see, I'm going page by page. I didn't see that. Wow. Okay. All right. The end soft at first was filling all and then made an absolute concentration into itself, which produced the abyss, the waters, or crystalline chaotic sea. Where'd they rise out of? What was they just saying? Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Were. That's all right. Sorry, Each folks. Each of these worlds has ten powers or spheres. What was I just saying? 
Oh my gosh! I am so sorry, folks. I am so sorry. <laughs> we don't pre-read this. <laughs> no, we don't. We're it's reading so... it, hearing it, as you <gasps> are, okay. basically. So anyway, it is very exciting. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I'm just like, I really do wonder now. I know. I'm going to research that. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. And Sof established his first point or dot in the divine sea. The face of God, crowned with light, rose over the vast sea and was reflected you. in the waters thereof. His two eyes were manifested, radiating with splendor and darting two beams of light, which crossed with those of the reflection. The brow of God and his eyes formed a triangle in heaven and its reflection formed a second triangle in the waters so was revealed the number six being that of universal creation i tell you words are just wow yeah but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and as the raiment garment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under foot isaiah fourteen nineteen didn't weren't we just in that not too long ago i don't know i i've seen this scripture not too long ago it's been very fresh the Kabbalists say that in order to make room for creation, Ansoff had to contract himself to a single point, making room for the worlds of the Sephirot. This is called, now that I can't do. T Zim Zum. Quick question. Zim Zum. T Zim Zum. Okay. M my question is okay. It's like they're having such a problem just believing that God is God and Jesus was Jesus, the Holy Spirit's this. But they're going to have someone who is <laughs> going to contract himself into a single point and do this and this, and they've got all these points yeah, they're crazy? bouncing Think off of. It. They're playing Pong with... A, I, I don't understand that. When you could just easily... I, it makes no hmm. sense, does it? Hmm. This is more complicated. It reminds me of that short change thing. Yeah, yeah. Which you'll have to tell before we're done with this. Cause okay. That makes the Kabbalists say that in order to make room for creation, I'm just re kind of doing it, Insoff <laughs> had to contract himself to a single point, making room for the worlds of the Sephirot. This is called Zimzum. <laughs> As the lightning flash descended, each sphere was formed one after another each serving as a vessel for receiving and containing the light. These vessels are also referred to as the fishuum, the garments of Insoth, but the vessels could not contain the divine light, and this resulted in what Kabbalah calls Shifara, the breaking of the vessels. Um, that's not Shivara? Shivara? Oh, Shivara! Shiva! Shiva! Yeah. No. Yeah, be darned. It is Shiva. Shiva. I would say Shiva. Yeah, the breaking of the vessels isn't Shiva destroyer. Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As the vessels shattered, the light dispersed <laughs> and scattered in the forms of sparks. Some of these sparks rose back up to their source. Others descended, becoming trapped in matter. Matter. CERN. Interesting. Shiva. You got it all together right there. Nope, nope. Read the next sentence. Uh-oh. Still others <laughs> fell down into the abyss and are trapped, and they're still there. Abaddon, Apollyon. <laughs> right, on, he's underneath, <laughs> right underneath the CERN. So, I mean, it just gets that this much better. Crazy. This I'm is... sorry. Let's continue. Okay, we don't I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'm it good. is something. <laughs> still others fell down into the abyss and are trapped there still. And because God, small g, is in everything and everyone, God, small b, himself, is in the pit, waiting to be released. Wow, how messed up is well, that? Well, isn't that interesting? That's a bad There's end. someone else in the, the pit. pit. Yeah, that's waiting to be released at a time This is the hour. Zohar's version of the fall, and since the last time, since the time of Isaac Lira, has served to explain the diaspora, dispersion, as a cosmic event. Not only Israel, but all of humanity, the entire universe, and even God himself is in exile. Golot. 
Hmm. Once again, Gershom Skolom. Skolom, late professor of Jewish mysticism, explains, The divine light is no longer in its proper place because the vessels were broken. There is nothing that, ha that was not damaged by the breaking. Nothing is in the place appointed for it. Everything is either below or above. All being is in Galut. And this is not all. Into the deep abyss there fell, as a result of the breaking of the vessels, forces of holiness, sparks of divine light. Hence there is a gullet of the divine itself, of the sparks of the Shekinah. These sparks of holiness are bound in fetters of steel in the depths of the shells, and yearningly aspire to rise to their source, but cannot avail to do so until they have support. So says Rabbi Hayam Vital, a disciple of Lyra. Okay, let's just bust it down. The only things that are in fetters, it's waiting to get angels out, are the fallen angels yep. that broke the vessels. Who are the vessels? We are well. the vessels. So, you know, you know, I, what in the world? What in the world? They're like, literally, they just describe like the whole fallen angel scenario and the giants and, you know, the whole getting... Hmm. Crazy. This is just nuts. <laughs> it is. It really is. This breaking of the vessels is the on, is only the first stage in the fall of Ensof's creation. It is the shattering and falling of the androgynous god small g of Kabbalah into the pit, bound in fetters of steel. Skolom. Skolom calls this a cosmic pitcher of gullet, a gullet of the divine itself. This cosmic fall is also the fall of the first Adam, Adam Kadman. In Kabbalah, Adam Kadman is the first emanation or creation of Ensof. He is Keter, the first sphere on the Seraphic tree. He is also Elohim, the king. He is the crown of the grand man of the Zohar, which is the entire Seraphic tree. He is not the man Adam created in Genesis, but is the primordial man, the celestial Adam, through which all other souls were created. The spheres of the Seraphat are not just worlds, but are also portrayed as powers and crowns. The breaking of the vessels is the fall of the ancient kings, princes, and powers. The Zohar holds the concept of two Adams, the first a divine being who, step, who stepping forth from the highest original darkness, created the second or earthly Adam in his own image. This is the grand man of the Zohar. The science of equilibrium is the key of occult science. Unbalanced forces perish in the void. So past the kings of the elder world, the princes of the giants. They have fallen like trees without roots, and their place is found no more. Eliphaz Levi, The History of Magic. Okay, so up here, when it was talking about the primordial mm -hmm. man was the celestial Adam, which all other souls were created, you know, it actually, in Ezekiel 18 and verse 4, the Lord actually flat tells us, Behold, all souls are mine. Amen. And then, of course, there's the rest of Scripture, but the, the beginning exactly. part, he states it. So, I mean, granted, yes, I get it. But everything is all twisted and yeah, kind everything's of all crazy twisted because and, and see you with a little bit of twist. If you are not rooted and grounded in the Word of God, you're going to be really confused because you know you could be sitting there in church and someone's talking about the first Adam and the last Adam, right? Uh -huh. But you know you're really not paying attention. You've not read it for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And then you hear this, and you're like, oh, okay, this is nuts. deception, just absolute deception. Well, and then it's like you know. They are pulling some stuff out of the Bible, don't get me wrong, they're twisting it. They're twisting and it. And they're trying to make it seem like it's a good thing, or they're trying to all put it over on this person, when honestly it's a God attribute or something that God had done. Mm-hmm. 
They, they actually, I believe, wow. are using confusion to act like they're smart. I'm sorry, but that's the way I look at it. Oh, oh, speaking of which, you got a story. Okay. Um, the way I see how they are writing this and trying to describe things is like something that happened to me many, many years ago. It was before I even had my daughter, so I'm going to say like 32 years ago. Wow, that's a long time ago. Like, Jessica's 31. But, oh, it's before you had Jessica? Yeah. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how long ago it was. Wow. <laughs> I am old. But anyway, yeah, like 32 years ago, I worked at a restaurant. It was a fast food restaurant. And um, this man came in, and he had bought a small cup of coffee. Back then, it was only 37 cents. I don't know why I remember this, because I remember <laughs> the large coffee cost 63 cents. Isn't that funny? And Nowadays, it, coffee's $1.29. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so anyway, he came in. I had my register open, already had his coffee. He gave me a $20 bill. I gave him his change. I was about ready to close my drawer, and he says, Oh, you know what? I need this broke, which is a 10. It's like, okay. So I gave him two fives. I handed it back. And then he was like, you know what? I need five ones. Anyway, this continued. It got to the point where I was so confused. I mean, absolutely, literally confused, Nikki. I did not know which way was up. He really messed up my mind. And I wanted to just hand him my till, which had the money, and say, here, you take what you want, right? Well, Finally, he was like, okay, I got it, thank you, and he walked out. As soon as he walked out, oh, it hit me. I think I was just shortchanged. Now, we're not supposed to give out change at that time, years ago. We were supposed to call for a manager. Well, my supervisor, Steve, was there, and I went up to him, and I said, I think I was just shortchanged. Now, I should have been fired, because that's, that's what was the rules back then. So he took my register, immediately went back and counted it. And I was over $200 short. That man walked out with a 37 cent cup of coffee at over $200. Well, he knew what he was doing. Thank God, though, Steve took the money out of his pocket and replaced it. In uh -huh. the yeah, wasn't that nice? But the point being is these people from the Zohar and from the Talmud, the Kabbalist, they use confusion to where you don't know what is truth and what is not truth. That's why it's so very important to read the Word of God, to pray without ceasing, and to fast. When God calls you to fast, fast and pray. It also says in the book of James, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will give it to you freely, and upbraideth not. If we do not do the things that God has called us to do, we will be deceived, Nikki. Well, we have to test the spirits. Test we the have spirits. to stop just taking man at face value because yes, man yes. is, you know. If you man hear will something, fall. we've got to be like the Bereans. If you hear something, don't sit there and argue, but search the scriptures to see if those things be so. And if it's not in the Word of God, walk away. Walk away. Or run, whichever. Or run. It all depends, you know, on how... I mean, unless that person themselves are deceived and not trying to deceive. See, there's two different I people I think there's out a there. lot of that going on, to be honest. Yes, there is. But I think that that's where... When you hear about the pouring out onto all flesh and stuff, yep, yep. you know, even in the latter, the latter rain or, well, you know, that's the weight, I'm sorry. But I do believe that there's ample opportunity being given and I believe it's happening now where those who were once deceived in some areas mm -hmm. as long as they are willing to search it out right. he's given it he's absolutely given it well, that's just know, like you know go ahead Nikki think about this for a minute if you would think about what that Pope Francis is going about doing trying to bring all religions together Okay, the coexist. Well, one of the craziest ones I thought was Islam, but you know he's doing it. I don't know how he's doing it, and he's also doing it with uh, the Kabbalists. But then he's got those that are Protestants. They're evangelicals jumping on the bandwagon. I want you to really seriously think about this. You know the word Protestant 
derives from the word protest. Martin Luther, he brought in the Reformation to pull away from the Catholic Church. You understand? Why? Because of the false doctrine. And here it is, he pulls away, and then you've got the Protestant churches. You've got Lutheran, you've got Methodists, you've got Church of God, you've got Baptists. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Now, we all have basically the same foundation. Not basically, we do. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Right. But now, here within the last few years with this Pope Francis, he's going around, and I'm not kidding. It's like, a, to me, a wicked spirit sweeping across the globe, bringing people in to embrace all religions right. and Catholicism all over again and bringing us to what they refer to as the mother church yeah you know Which, I actually just Kenneth, H not Kenneth Hagen Kenneth Copeland is one of them now you see you got John Hagee who basically adheres to Kabbalah yeah you know you've got so many different people that at one time was rooted and grounded solidly in the word of God that are being swept away or sometimes I question and I wonder were they really what I mean by that is you've got the Jesuits when they first came out with the pre-tribulation rapture when they first came out their goal was to infiltrate the Protestant churches with this false doctrine and get the eyes off of the Catholic Church, yep. off of the Pope, and back onto self and stuff. So right. they sent, God help us, they sent Jesuit priests in to say, I used to be a Catholic, but now I'm a born-again believer, and they become your pastor, and slowly they indoctrinate you with false doctrine and lies to confuse you. Look at how quickly that pre-tribulation rapture has swept the earth and perverted the word of God. Well, and think of this. Even last time, look at what the Jezebel doctrine or the Jezebel spirit we had just been studying over yeah. there. She did that. How many years ago was it that that lady first um, introduced Juanita it? Juanita Bynum. Um, I don't know how many years ago. Well, put it this way. It, it was, is uh, lesser, it was um, lesser than what the pre-trib... Thing oh yeah, on. much less. That's what I'm saying. Less, yeah. Look at how far that has come. Yeah. If you try to stand on the word of God and you try to give truth and you are female, mm -hmm. oh Lord, you got the Jezebel spirit. You need right. to sit down and shut up. We need to cast that out of her. And you know what? It. Well, it's well what's really funny is before it was called the pre-tribulation doctrine or dispensationalism, uh -huh. the Jew, the Jesuit priests called it futurism. It was called futurism. Hmm. And so people, he twisted so much. And, and I can understand now how he did it. Because, see, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Yes. And it's the honor of kings to search it out. And then if you read in Daniel nine twenty seven, where they had said, this part's talking about the Antichrist. You can see it because you've been taught that all your life. Right. But if you take the entire chapter in context, you see, wait a minute, no it doesn't. That part right there about where the um, one that destroys mm -hmm. the city, mm -hmm. um, the prince that comes, yep. then it goes right back to Jesus. Yep. It goes right back to Jesus because the entire chapter is focused on the Hebrews, the Jewish people, 70 weeks, the reason why Jesus came and what he was going to accomplish until the very end. Yep. It's all about Jesus. You just got that one little verse and that man, and you can't tell me he was not being ruled by an evil spirit to get in and show them this is how you twist this one this is how you twist this one you understand yeah. what I'm saying and so it fits because there is not one scripture in the word of God to support a pre-tribulation rapture and believe it or not there is not one scripture to point that it's going to be a seven year long thing either well here's one for you how about Matthew 24 they you know that's a dip dispensations uh playground right there yeah. you know they're like oh this is for this part's written to these people and this part's no, written to no. these people and then when you think about it you're like wait a minute was not jesus's disciples considered the By church church exactly you know so and they were believers yes 
So when you look at it in that context and you start reading it, things will start making more sense because it's well, like, wait a minute. Then, you know, you've got John Hagee that says the Jews basically have a free ticket to heaven. No, they don't. Oh my every gosh. single person, and that's the thing people don't understand, Nikki. Every single person that has ever been born has got to go through the same way, which is Jesus Christ. And they'll say, yeah, but Jesus wasn't back, born back in the Old Testament. No, he was not, but he was revealed. Right. Because Jesus even said, Abraham, yep. remember, rejoice to yep. see my day, and he did see it. Right. Abraham knew, and it was through faith <laughs> in Jesus that was not born yet. That is how Abraham was saved. And Moses, all of them, that is how they were saved. It is through faith. and by Jesus Christ. So, anyway, that was a great chapter. And tomorrow I'm praying and hoping that I feel better. Um, I have been very sick, and that's why we have been slow on the go here to read the chapters. But I'm trusting the Lord that he is going to heal me and give me energy to continue to walk with him. So everyone have a great night, and we love you. Have a great night.